You want to make a change in your life. Perhaps you need to make a change, but you're having a hard time actually getting that process started. The key might lie in your expectations. My guest today is Art Costello, author of the book Expectation Therapy. Art, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Kristen. So what are our expectations and how do they impact our life? Our expectations are the seed from which we grow. Uh, I believe that since the dawn of man, we've been planted with a seed of expectation. It's why the caveman grew, <laughs> it's why we grow, and it's essential to our growth um, to, to be able to move forward. Uh, it's the seed with which we grow, it's everything. And how are our expectations formed? Our expectations are formed from birth by the events that, that are around us and how we develop. Uh, when we, uh, as infants, begin to learn to expect our mother's going to feed us, all those organic, what I call organic expectations, we start to form and develop our expectations either positively or negatively. Faith or fear. We have faith that our mother's going to feed us. We have faith that our father's going to provide for us. And that's how we, uh, we develop them. We just, from birth, start moving and progressing. And as we interact more through time, we start developing them and creating our, our base, our core expectations, our integrity, who we are, what we are, and what we're going to be. I believe it starts at a very early age. Uh, if you've ever ran into somebody who's extremely fearful, I can probably show you that in childhood that their expectations were distorted in some manner and they started looking things fearfully. Every expectation that a person has can be changed if you realize that it can be a conscious choice that we make, whether to have faith or, have, or, or live in fear. So our expectations are based on those two principles, faith and fear. Faith isn't always about uh, a religious sense. Faith is having faith in a parent, a teacher, a coach. Uh, comes in many forms, but so does fear. Fear can stop us from reaching any goal that we have. It's halting. So how we learn that fear is really what, uh, how we learn to react to that fear is what really makes the difference in our lives. It, it really is very life forming. Each of us as an individual has our own unique set of expectations. Absolutely. Um, we, as I said before, we, we form them in our youth and in our childhood. And as we grow in, in our, uh, the d different uh, events that happen in our, our lives, it really changes us, uh, our view. Uh, expectations are, are fluid, they're changing all the time. So what is the role of expectations and our ability to make a change? I know that you work with a lot of different kinds of people, some people who are in really tough situations and they need to make a change, like leave an abusive home but they just don't know how to do it or they're afraid to do it. What is the role of expectations in that scenario? When you use your expectations like they were designed, it brings a clarity to your life and the decisions that you make, if you follow the process that I teach in, in Expectation Academy, if you use that process, everything becomes clearer and it becomes easier to make decisions and it takes away that fear that you, that you have of that's halting and stops you from making the right decisions. And it just builds in a sense of uh, clarity. It's about clarity. It's about it, expectations of where a lot of your clarity comes from. So you talk about some simple steps. Do you mind sharing them with us? Yeah, it's really very simple. It's uh, identify, clarify it, and then solidify it with a plan. If you'll use those three steps, which sound very simple, but are very difficult to institute if you don't know how to do it. And I've developed a process over time that I've used since childhood uh, from my own life that uh, it works. I know it works because it's worked in my life. Now you have a very interesting background. You know, you've been to the war, you've had a lot of experiences in your life. Tell me a little bit about that. 
Well, when I was nine years old, um, I was torn away from everything that was near and dear to me. And it wasn't my family or anything like that. It was about baseball. My parents moved from a very uh, urban area to a very rural area, and we had no neighbors within two miles, uh, 20 kids in my high school. Uh, we didn't have, you know, I didn't have the people to, to associate with it. I did when I was in the urban area. So I used to go to this hill it was right next to our house and lay on my back and have these con conversations with God. And uh, I was so lonely, uh, in despair, and uh, all I, I heard a voice and it just said, you know, be faithful and it, you know, just be faithful to me and it will happen. And I, I left there and just feeling more comfort. And it's when I started to developing a plan of how I was gonna escape my environment, which, was at 16, 17 when I graduated uh, high school to go into the Marine Corps. I went into the Marine Corps and uh, went to Vietnam and I found myself in Vietnam using the same, uh, listening to the same voice, using the same techniques that I developed at nine and uh, everything has just moved on through the death of my wife in, in 2008 which, or 2006, which was the really pivotal time for me when I really exploded in growth after her death. But there was a three year period after her death where I fell apart mm -hmm. and I just lost it. And uh, one night I just got down on my hands and knees again and prayed and asked the universe what was gonna become of me because I thought I had lost everything. And I heard that voice again say, rise up, go at it. And I, from that point on, my life has just blossomed and turned and. Uh, the universe and God is providing everything that uh, has always been promised to me from the time I was nine on. It's been amazing, an amazing journey. You share um, some stories of people you encountered in Vietnam in your book, Expectation Therapy. Uh, can you share some of those with us? Yeah, um, the most prominent story is uh, where I learned to love. Uh, I met a little nine-year-old girl one night when we were coming uh, back off of a patrol, I should say the dawn, we were coming back. We had been on a night patrol and uh, I came around the side of a building and I looked down and staring back up through this uh, chicken wire fence was this little nine-year-old girl with big eyes just looking at me and I saw this, I saw in her what I saw in myself at nine years old and it was help me. And uh, from, I didn't get to meet her that day, but uh, when we got back to our compound, I went straight to the chaplain and I said I wanted to do something for that little girl. I found out it was an orphanage that we had passed by. So I uh, wrote home to my mom. Uh, we set up a, 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 a care package thing where my mom could send her clothes, but I supplied money for her to get educated and uh, to, uh, to, uh, to grow. And, uh, I, it's where I learned to love. I mean, uh, she just made my life, it made the war sensible to me. It brought my comfort, that was my comfort zone from the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just loved her to death and I supported her as long as I could. And in 1968, I was told uh, not to send any money more anymore that the uh, uh, North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong had used the orphanage as a human shield and that uh, she was possibly lost. Mm. So uh, I don't know it for a fact. One of my goals someday is to go back to Vietnam and see if I could find that little girl between Da Nang and, and Dong Ha somewhere. But uh, God will provide it. We'll yeah. find it. Absolutely. So, so in, your, in your book, Expectation Therapy, you talk about collective diminished expectations. Mm -hmm. what, what is that? Collective diminished expectations is what uh, governments, religion, uh, what any organization, advertisers all use to control man. Uh, how they do it is they incrementally seed an expectation in your mind and you form an opinion and after you form that opinion, it, go, it, it just takes, you hear it so many times that it just becomes your reality. Uh, I believe that it was how Hitler took the, uh, the German population to hate the Jews enough that they would annihilate a race. Uh, 
by collector doing this expectations. I believe that advertisers use it when they try to sell you a product, when salesmen use it, uh, fear of loss. Uh, it's, it's used quite often. How can we know that our expectations are being influenced by an outside force? You can tell when, uh, when you become hyper aware of the importance of expectations, you develop a, uh, a way of looking at things so you recognize it. You just really, if you become aware of your expectations, you'll, you'll know exactly when somebody tries to control you. And that's one of the beauties of it. it it's really a rugged individualism, uh, which we're very much lacking in our society now. Uh, people are, are bombarded with political, uh, social expectations, uh, and they take it, they, they absorb those expectations, and they fail to form their own opinions and have the courage because of fear to not stand up to them and say, no, this is what I believe. So when you, when you have positive expectations and you're aware of the collective diminished expectations, there's a fine balance that will bring balance to your life and you will flourish. You'll, you'll feel better about yourself. It really helps you grow. It's, it's how we all grow is from our expectations. Everything we do is based on an expectation. So when we do that, we, we really learn the balance. It's about balancing your life. You know, it's really ironic because here in the Western world, we think that we are mavericks and independent people and that we think our own minds. But what you're saying is that in fact, that's not the case. That's not the case. That Absolutely. we are on more of an automated response and that we may not even be aware of it. We live in such an automated society. Uh, you know, we don't even have to think about mathematical problems now. We do them on, a, on our cell phone. Uh, we ask Siri a question, you know, and we, we just, the more and more computers take over our lives, the less we're using our own expectations and our own growth mechanisms. Art, so what is the cost of living automated in terms of our future? It's a good question because what happens is you fail to live. When you start reacting out of things that are automatic in your life, you stop thinking about it, you stop growing. Everything stops, it, you, you're just performing. And that true passion that lies deep with inside you doesn't come out when you function in an automatic state. And that's what's happening with our world, with the computers and everything else and that's going on. And advertisers, uh, schools, uh, colleges even want you to function on automatic. Do what I say and you know I've got the answer. Uh, and it stopped the growth of people. And when people have purpose and passion and it rises with expectation, so the cost is really great because we just, we just perform. We don't live. And living is what life is about. It's what God intended for each and every one of us is to live the fullest that we can live. And we're dishonoring our universe and God when we, uh, when we don't uh, perform and with passion and, and do the things that we want. There are multiple cultural traditions, um, Buddhism, for example, that says we shouldn't have any expectations. What's your response to that? Well, for one thing, I, I think that over the course of time, uh, it's morphed into something that really wasn't intended. I think I, I have a, a clear vision uh, about uh, what the Eastern religions have proposed and not expecting, because there is a space in time where you just don't need to expect. It's, you need to allow. Things. Yeah, <laughs> you just need to let things happen. But when we're talking about living, you can't do it. It, it. You have to, in order to live life, you have to have expectations or you're not gonna move forward. It's what's brought us from caveman to now. Some would argue that that's not a good thing, but, <laughs> but I disagree. Because uh, when you really look at where we're going, I, I really am interested in seeing, you know, as you know, one of my next books is gonna be Quantum Expectations. <laughs> and uh, I really wanna see where we're going with that uh, because uh, we're, it's a whole new world out there 
that we're just starting to get into with computers and, and the digital technology that we have. So it's going to be interesting. I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a group that is going to become automatic, and then we're going to have people that are pure, passionate thinkers that, who are going to grow our society and solve the problems that we're going to be faced with, with over the next uh, millenniums and <laughs> to come. So it, I, I hope I'm around to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the title of the book, Expectation Therapy, what's the therapy part? The therapy part came that it's a way to heal yourself because it's how when I was young and didn't know where I was going and what I was doing, that was the therapy for me. Uh, I didn't have psychiatrists that I could go see. I didn't have that. I had to heal myself. And I believe that self-healing is possible for anybody. So that was where the therapy part of expectation came from, is it's how I healed myself and how my life has blossomed in and moved forward from where I was uh, 68 years ago as a baby <laughs> to now, you know, and I, 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 what keeps me young, that's what keeps me living. Uh, I enjoy life more than, more than I ever have in any other point in my life. I'm just uh, meeting some of the greatest people in life and uh, I'm, I'm just blossoming and, and flourishing and my expectations always are of the highest and, uh, and it's always my therapy. What about people? We have a lot of communities where people don't have an awareness of other possibilities. You know, perhaps they're economically disadvantaged or there's just not that type of education or even modeling in their families to think about another potential reality. How do you create expectations when you're coming from that space? Well, I think dreams, dreams. If you don't have an expectation of anything happening, it takes away your dreams. It takes away the possibilities. Possibilities are what make things happen. Expectations is what starts it all. So when you open yourself up to the possibilities of everything, whether you have nothing. When I was growing up, I had really nothing except some books on a bookshelf. And as I was young, I would read those books, but it opened up my mind and I knew that the possibilities existed in uh, the world that I could be something, uh, that I could learn a lot more than I was learning on a farm. And uh, my expectation was to get myself out of that situation into the position where I could go move on and start living the fulfilling life that, that I believe that we're all by birthright uh, capable of. I don't care if you're in the darkest parts of the Congo uh, their expectations are about feeding themselves, uh, taking care of putting a roof over their head. But once they fulfill those, they can grow because then you start fulfilling other things and then the process starts. But when you live in fear, it never happens. It stops. So, so let's talk about some specific people that you've worked with. I know you work with a lot of women who are in an abusive home and mm -hmm. they need to change that. How does expectation therapy work in that kind of circumstance? The first thing is to identify, like I had said, every, what they want and what their desire is. Once they focus and really down deep in their heart have identified what they want, then I, what, how I work with them is I make sure that they're absolutely positive with it, with the clarification part. Have them mull it over. Have them walk up to their mountain. Find that place where you are totally at ease and your mind just goes in and, and you can really work through the thought process and you start to just really get yourself comfortable with that and you clarify it down to the point where you know absolutely what you want. It brings that sense of clarity and then you move into the uh, solidification part which is laying out the actual plan. You put the things into uh, a written workable plan. You always have to write it down because that is your tool to keep looking at and giving you guidance on moving through through your problem. Uh, it's worked. Uh, it not only works with uh, abused women, uh, women in bad relationships, it works in business. 
It works with athletes. I work with a lot of athletes that are trying to either transition out of professional sports or they're trying to uh, increase their performance. What I do actually helps them because we take everything in increments. And when you move incrementally through this process, what, by the time you're done with it, you have gotten it so solidified in your mind and in the, in the process, the written process, that you know where you're going. Your direction becomes your purpose. And once you've got that purpose fulfilled, then you just take it and you apply it to the next thing that you want to do in your life. That's what I've done. And it works. I, I know that it really works. I mean, when you write things down, the power you go back you know, a couple days later, a week later, a month later, years later, and you're like, wow, everything that I wrote down is, has come to fruition and more. And I think that having that clarity and also that, that point that you can return to, just to evaluate, can help you find that confidence that you know, I can get what I want, I can manifest the life that I want to live for myself. I believe, I actually ask people to make affirmations and write them down because mm -hmm. once you make an affirmation and you start to put, take the steps to put it into practice, they come true every time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It works. Absolutely works. What kind of people have you worked with? Uh, I've worked with professional athletes. I've worked with housewives that are in the process <laughs> of divorce or have lost a husband uh, or a wife to, uh, to death of cancer and different things. Uh, I've worked with a wide variety of uh, business owners, uh, helping them increase their uh, uh, interaction in their office, in their, uh, in their business, not only financially, but uh, psychologically in the office, where uh, once you set the expectations for, for your employees and you're consistent in then applying them, it brings clarity, and when you have that clarity in your office, and everybody's working for the, in the right direction, things happen, and it really is very fulfilling, and it's very rewarding financially when everybody's on the same page, working for the same purpose and goal of a business. Absolutely, and it works. So, so someone who's watching and they want to connect with you, Art, where can they find you? You can find me on expectationtherapy.com. Uh, we, uh, I love working with people. I enjoy it. I, I really want to work with you and make your life uh, expectation spectacular. I love it. Art Costello, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kristen.